Hi, this is Steve Garrison, VP of Marketing at PK8. I'm at the Open Networking Summit 2014. I'm here with my good colleague and friend, Jim Metzler from Astron Metzler. Steve, it's great to be here today. Fantastic conference. So what do you think's going on at the show this year, Jim? What's different from last year? Well, Steve, it's really curious. It really depends who you are, an enterprise mm -hmm. player or a service provider. And the enterprise players are really curious. I've seen a real shift in the last 12 or 18 months of them coming up the knowledge curve, mm -hmm. knowing more about SDN. Mm -hmm. What I haven't seen, Steve, is them then jumping over the chasm and actually doing yeah. anything with it. Still in the analysis, kicking the tires. In 2014, we'll see a lot more proof of concept. What's different, though, is some of the larger service providers who really kind of get it, if you will, they're much more aggressive than they have been. And Steve, I know you've been talking to mm -hmm, some. What mm -hmm. are you seeing? Well, I'm actually seeing a very similar thing, Jim, and it's kind of always the way a new trend is. There's always a beachhead where the pain is extreme, and then it trickles throughout the industry. And I think the enterprise today uh, is, has a lower pain point than, say, some of the hyperscale data center providers and some of the large carriers who have a tremendous heterogeneous network environment already. So the idea of an external control plane makes a lot of sense to them from day one. Mm -hmm. So that is why the proof points are, are starting with that group, I think, or those two, those two segments, I think. Now, Steve, you know, typically when you look at new technology, mm -hmm. some people use it to do just what they've done before, better, faster, cheaper. Right. Some say, hey, can this allow me to extend a little bit, get into some new markets? And some actually say, this is transformative. I can do things differently. Right. What are you seeing relative to the hyperscale data centers? Yeah, uh, or to the carriers, I'll throw both in. Sure. I think what we're seeing with both those groups is a willingness to rethink IT uh, to some extent. I mean, the, the, the good news is we have 30 years of history. Protocols have been built, they've functioned, they've brought us to the internet we see today, they've brought us to the data center or the enterprise that we see today. For the SDN movement to really get into the next step though, like you said, it's proof of concept, but it's also people willing to take a step back and actually do what the Stanford team did, take a clean slate and say, what would be nice if I could engineer my network based on MAC addresses versus IPs? What if I could create a virtual domain just because I want to do assign a certain pool of traffic, a certain a, a, a query or profile? That's the kind of thinking that's getting customers we're working with very excited, mm -hmm. and they're really starting to understand that once they go through that learning curve, they see a tremendous operational savings at, at the end of that tunnel. Now, you say a clean slate. Are we talking about a greenfield data center? Are we talking about building something new in a data center? How do you see that happening? Well, it's going to be more, more adding on to existing data centers, but it's back to that proof of concept. Nobody puts anything into production day one, Jim, right, as you know. So they start with a lab. There might be some whiteboarding sessions, white, white paper discussions, and even some proof of concepts, but mm -hmm. that proof of concept leads to a pilot. The pilot proves out that the operational framework can work within the existing company's environment, and then that's the next step or the next hurdle to go into production. That, that process can take up to a year, mm -hmm. which is why we're very excited to see more people interested in POCs this year than last year, because that's, the, that's getting us on base. That's getting SDN on base yeah. to move through the bases. Now, you say it can take a year. How much of that is technical, you know, making sure this thing works, and how much is operational? I mean, whenever yeah. I've dealt with carriers, I always say they can't deploy it if it doesn't tie into their OSS, BSSs. Exactly. And right. that can be a really tangled mess. Yeah. What's happening? Well, I think uh, we like to try and shorten the paper study to as quick as we can. We worked with you on your mm -hmm. ebook last year that yeah. helped uh, bring us some customers, actually. Uh, so we try to minimize, even though we love white papers, Jim, we like to minimize that paper study because oh, no. getting people ha get hands-on experience is actually the gap. That's actually the challenge, right? If you look at how long it took the server market to get into this whole hardware, software, software separation, we talk as if it happened overnight. It actually took 15 years. Yes. So SCN's the same thing. Do people in the market understand how to use an external controller? Do they understand how to now look at a virtual system? Well, not, not initially. It takes time. So a little bit of paper study, yeah. usually a month. Uh, the POC for us can be a, a wonderful experience that lasts weeks or months because there's a lot of tuning and everybody sure. still comes at this from a different point of view. Yeah. Python versus Java or GUI versus CLI or, uh, you know, I needed a multi-threaded controller for HA day one. And again, back to your point, what are the existing skills in the operational framework? All those things become part of the POC. Yeah and become part of the due diligence to do a side-by-side -side looking for a metric. Am I doing it better, faster, or cheaper? Yeah. Am I really going to have savings down, downstream when my technicians actually do the new manipulations of whatever they're doing? Mm -hmm. And that is where we actually learn the most, and I think the customers learn the most. Well, that makes perfect sense. I, mean, I do a lot of paper analysis, as you right, uh, mentioned, and that's really good early yeah. on in the sales cycle. Yeah. But now help me with this, Steve. I mean, we're talking about tying into OSS, BSSs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
We're also talking about potentially shifting roles, shifting right. skills. That's right. I'd rather do technology than organizational challenges sometimes because the technology is right. actually easier. Will we be getting learnings coming back from some of these players? Or is it, oh no, that's our proprietary information. That's how we compete. So everybody has to go through the same learning curve. Yeah, well, I'll tell you the good news is with the data center side and the care side, most of the projects are based around some form of open source technology. Yeah. So you know, OpenStack is probably the, the poster child for that. The good news is open source means people will be able to learn. Uh, I think in five years you'll start to see some lockdown and some proprietary technology be, be baked, but most of our customers are trying to learn from open source tools. Why? Okay. Because they want to leverage a community. Uh, they want to be able to have extensible technology, and guess what? They're trying to avoid the, lo the classic lock-in that we're talking about, and, and so proprietary technology doesn't get them there. Uh, the other aspect of this is that um, part of the reason we launched the starter kit last year was to exactly give people this sense of how do I start, what do I learn, how do I enable my team to learn, and our kit not only helps you build a stack, it teaches you why you're doing the steps you're doing. So that kind of tutorial-based product, mm -hmm. it's not a mainstream mission-critical product you put into production, it's right. a teaching tool. Okay. We're actually finding business around teaching tools right now. Okay, Steve, as we wind this down, mm -hmm. what one or two things should the audience be looking for this year relative to STN to say, I get it, it's real, I have to really get on board? Right, I think the first one is you're going to see a lot more use cases. and. A lot of the idle presentations yesterday were all around use cases. Mm -hmm. Let me show what I can specifically do with OpenFlow or SDN technology today. Mm -hmm. That grounds everybody in IT. You know that. Sure. IT guys know what the difference between marketing hype and reality is. Show me something that's real. Make sure it works. Okay. Hey, now I can trust my gut. My IT gut says, I learned something and I know what's going on behind the magic screen. Mm -hmm. okay. Now I can move to the next step. Okay. Hey, Steve, thanks so much. It's really been fun chatting with you. Like A great conference, lots of stuff going on. And thanks for joining me here for this video. Thank thanks you. to the ONS team. Thank, Thank you. you much.